In this special edition of tutorials, we will render our minifigure, discuss scene settings and rendering environments, learn how to download custom environments, and so much more. Welcome to the Learn It channel, Lesson 10H. So with this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on rendering. Why? Well, right now we have a very generic rendering. Actually, uh, when we're modeling, you can see that there's a little bit of rendering going on here. We see ourselves a little light in the background, but we want a really nice professional uh, look to it. So let's do that. Let's go into our workspace selector and select render. And here you can see the uh, description of this workspace is generates realistic renderings of the design. So let's do that. Great, and we can actually hide all of our different assembly features there. So getting started, you can see that there are really nice uh, light features here. The, the rendering has already begun. It's a little bit better, but we can make it even better than what we see on the screen. So how do we do that? Well, let's just go up to our toolbar here and we can see that uh, we can add or change our appearances. We've already assigned appearances to our minifigure. We don't need to change anything, but if we did need to, we could do it right here as well. Let's now go to our scene settings. This sets the environment and lighting for the scene. The setting only affects the rendering workspace. So this will not change anything in our design workspace. So let's select that. I'm just going to make our window a little bit bigger here. So with our scene settings, we're just gonna start from the top and work our way down. Now I have to move the window over to the side in order to bring up this little box right here. But we have our background set to solid color. So let's click there. We can actually change it to anything we want. We can change it to red if we want. We can change it to any of these colors. Oh, that was actually pretty nice. A nice blue if we wanted. So this is a little bit nicer if we wanted just a plain background, but uh, we're going to we're gonna change this to something even better. Let's just restore defaults. Now we're going to pick environment. The environment hasn't changed at all. Well, you might not think, but here we can go into the environment library. Our current environment is selected as sharp highlights. Now we can select all sorts of different things. We can select crossroads, double click on it, and let's see what happens. Let's move around our image. Oh, here we go. We've got some crossroads right now. Okay, let's uh, select dry lake bed. Now notice as I select these different environments, the lighting changes. Right now we can actually see where the sun is shining from. There's the sun off in the distance. It's a sunset and you can see all the sun is hitting him right in the front and his back is all shaded. And here we have a little shadow coming that way as well. So actually the sun uh, source is coming, the light source is coming from right over there. So let's go to Jaya Lake Bed. There we go. So here we have a similar situation. The lighting is coming from that direction and actually we can see the sun right up above there. Okay, we've got field and we've even got some sharp highlights. We've got uh, plaza. There's so many different things to select. So let's look at plaza right here. You can see that we designed our minifigure to a very similar uh, scale to the original, but let's make him a little bit more lifelike. Let's go back to settings. Well, let's go to position. And here we have a couple interesting features. Let's just talk about ground scale first of all. As we go down, our ground scale gets smaller and our Lego man gets bigger. So I kind of like, I don't know, a ground scale of, I don't know, that looks pretty cool right there, 134. Now our rotation as well. See, uh, right now our Lego man is looking off to our entrance way over here. Well, let's rotate him. Let's have him looking towards, oh, he's going to go to the park over here. Great. So that's how we rotate. And as you can see, actually, the sun is hitting his back. So we might not like that. We might like that. It all depends on the the scene and the environment that we select. I kind of like that with his back right now. That's great. So let's now select position. Our ground plane. This is important to select 
we want to check our ground plane and you can see the difference here right now he's just floating off in the in space but we want to actually ground him and then we can flatten the ground as well so it adjusts the scale to the size of our object we can add a reflection um, say for example he was on some sort of like even a desert has a little bit of a reflection certain times of the day so we can change the roughness of that great let's just turn that off now perspective we definitely want to have perspective set for our camera orthographic is what we work on in design mode but it's not very lifelike so we want to make sure perspective is on let's go to focal length so here we can change it if we know anything about cameras uh, our focal length can change just like we're using an actual camera so the higher the focal length that creates this perspective and then we can go all the way down to like a fisheye perspective 12 millimeters so whatever you're thinking uh, looks better uh, remember the eye i believe is around 50 millimeters our normal eye or it's around 35 i, f I forget but anyways um, the point is is we can change our focal length to whatever we want okay so say we have all of our lighting everything done just the way we want it what about our lego man he's looking very plain right now well this is the secret we have assembled everything we have put the right kind of joints and the right kind of motion on our minifigure so let's just grab any of the assembled items we could even have him sit if we wanted and look at that as we adjust the assembly items the the ground plane adjusts with them so let's let's make it so that our our minifigure here is looks like he's walking there we go and actually he's he's pointing off in the distance he's saying hey look at that really cool tree over there i think i see a beautiful bird up there great and actually he's going to be looking a little bit off to the side there i think that looks pretty sweet right there so let's just put our frame just the way we want it now what do we do well let's open up our browser go to our name views and call us a new named view and we're going to say render one great that looks really sharp so now that we've set the scene let's go to render we could actually go to do an in canvas render but this uses a ton of processing power so right now it's elapsing with our time it creates more iterations the more iterations the better the uh the render becomes and you can see we want it to get all the way to excellent it can get to final and then infinite as well but let's just pause there great and instead of that let's stop our in canvas render when we go in canvas render every time we move our mouse it wants to re-render so this is just to see like our reflections just a basic what we're going to see in the final product so let's stop that let's go back to our named view so we're going to go to the better way what i think is better is our render right here great and we're going to select our local render and final we could actually go advanced settings and we could go all the way to excellent if we want now let's go all the way to excellent we could select transparent background that would get rid of our entire environment but keep the lighting so maybe we really like the lighting we don't like the environment and we just want our minifigure we just want our item to retain the lighting and the perspective and all of that that we have change so we could turn on transparent background but i kind of want to see what this looks like with the background remember the background might not be the best quality right now but this will render out as well so we can go to custom i'd like to go to print and let's do a really nice big size eight and a half by 11 and then let's start rendering it local rendering started let's wait till this finishes okay it looks like it's all done so now we can just click on our rendering gallery on the bottom there and here is our final image so I will show that on the large screen right now
you can download it and save it wherever you would like. Before we finish, say we go to our scene settings and we don't like any of these environments or we don't like the lighting. Well, you can see at the bottom, we can attach a custom environment. So where can we find these? Well, let's go to a site called Polyhaven, polyhaven.com. This is an amazing site that you can download free HDRI files. So let's go to Assets, HDRI. These are environment files. So here we can find anything that we think would be suitable for uh, our environment. And with each of these, you can see that there is a sample type of lighting for different types of objects. So if we scroll through these, any one that we like, we could download. I'll do that right now. I kind of like this one. Let's click on that. So say we want to download this file. Well, we've got it set to 4K right now, but usually with environments, we would like to have a really nice image. So if we go to 24K, look at it's 1.05 gigabytes. That's a little extreme. Let's just go to 8K. Let's not go overboard here. We can download that file. And once it has been downloaded, we can go attach custom environment. Select from the computer, find our file, and there we go. Great, now look at what we have here. We have a whole different environment to work with. Oh, this is great. So we've got some stars in the background there. Let's adjust this to make it look pretty. And we can do this with any other type of environment. Hope that you have benefited from this tutorial. If you have, please give it a like, please subscribe, and please stay tuned for our next tutorial called Motion Study. So hope to see you then.